Hi guys, welcome to the second section, Reactive Programming with RxPHP. In this section, we will introduce RxPHP. Then, we move on to basic principles and naming conventions of reactive extensions. Next, we will see components of RxPHP. After that, we will see writing debug subject, JSON decode operator, and C URL observable. Next will be proc open and non blocking method. Lastly, we will see event loop and RxPHP. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with introducing RxPHP. In this video, we're going to take a look at downloading and installing RxPHP. We then see versions of RxPHP. RxPHP is a port of RxJS. This web page gives brief information about RxPHP. We are going to use Composer to handle all dependencies in our PHP projects. It has become a state-of-the-art tool, so if you haven't used it before, download it first and check out some basic usage from this link. Now, we first download Composer from this web page. We type this command to get the latest version of Composer. We can also download it manually, as here you can see there are various versions available. I've downloaded version 1.4.2, which is the latest version. Now, if you click on this version, you get a file prompt of composer.par file. After this file is downloaded in your downloaded section, you'll see a composer.far file. I've copied this file in rxphp underscore 01 folder. This directory is created for composer project. Now, we create a new directory via terminal. After running this command, you will get Welcome to Composer Config Generator. This command will guide us for creating a json.config file. We fill in the required fields by the interactive wizard. The package name here is test slash rxphp. Description. You can add it if you want, or else leave it blank and simply press Enter. Next is Author, where I'm writing the name as Martin Sakura. Then open Angular bracket and write the email address and close the bracket. Next is the minimum stability, which I've skipped, and press Enter. After that is package type, which I skip. Then license, which I've kept blank. Then we have to define the dependencies, if any. We have to first type yes and press Enter. Then we have to write the package name here. So I'm writing ReactiveX slash RxPHP. Then it asks to enter the version constraint. In this field, you can add something greater than 2.0, where it will search for version 2.0. But for now, I'm leaving this field blank, so it will use the latest version of RxPHP. As you can see, it is using version 2.0 for ReactiveX slash RxPHP. This is how we can add dependencies. After you're done with it, you have to leave it blank and press Enter. Then, it will ask us if we'd like to define any dev dependencies. In our project, we don't require any, so we type No. Then, it will ask to confirm the generation. As we've already composed a file, we simply type No. Now, this is how the composer of JSON file looks like. This is the composer of my JSON file. This is the package name. Author's name. His email address. These are dependencies we added in our project. Here is the autoload code. This will automatically load bootstrap.php file, which we can find inside the code bundle. This is the bootstrap.php file. We have to type this command. Command installs all the dependencies. When the library is successfully downloaded, we have the vendor folder in rxphp. Inside vendor folder, we have autoload.php, which is created by Composer to handle all class autoloading on demand. Let's move the vendor folder in the home folder. Let's see a code. This code print the string length of the fruits. We first created an observer called as callback observer to be precise, which takes three functions as arguments. This is the first function. This is the second function. And this one is the third function. These are called on the next item in the stream, on error, and when the input stream is complete and won't admit any more items. 
The advantage of the Callback Observer class is that we don't need to write a custom Observer class every time we want to handle incoming items in some special and not very reusable way. With Callback Observer, we can just write the callables for signals we want to handle. We run the code with this command. So, this is the output. As you can understand, we have five letters for apple, six for banana, six for orange, and nine for raspberry. This example was very easy, but compared to the JavaScript environment, it's not very common to use asynchronous operations in PHP. And in case we do have to work asynchronously, it's probably something non-trivial. We use Symfony Console Component to handle all user input from the command line, and where we can, use similar principles to handle mouse events as we saw in the two RxJS examples. The JavaScript examples work very well as examples of what reactive programming, reactive extensions, looks like and what its benefits are. There are two versions of RxPHP. The RxPHP1.x is stable and requires PHP 5.5 and above. All examples are made for RxPHP1.x, more specifically RxPHP 1.5 and above. Its API is based mostly on RxJS4, but it takes some features from RxJS5 as well. There's also RxPHP2 in development, which requires PHP 7.0 and above. RxPHP2 API, from the user's perspective, is almost the same as 1.x. It just makes some things easier. When we encounter any differences worth mentioning, we'll give them extra.